Okay, so now my rock is done cooking, and if you open it, it should be bubbling still, even though the timer's off. So we're going to cook it for another minute. My rock did start boiling. I don't know if you can see, but my rock was boiling. Um, ugh. You can kind of see it bubbling now, I don't know. We're all going to get radiation poisoning from this or whatever. See how the rock is boiling? You want it to still be boiling when you open the door. Otherwise, it hasn't been boiling for long enough. It probably should boil for about, like, um, a minute. So, I would say cook it for five minutes instead of four minutes. And you can see it's boiling. You want to boil it for a good minute. So, it takes about four minutes to reach the boiling point, And then you want to cook it for an additional minute. Um, so, yeah. And you'll know it's been long enough if you open the door and the rock is still boiling. So you can see it's still boiling. So that's a good... Ooh, I fogged up my camera. So it's going to be really hot. Please be careful. Do not spill this on you. It is scalding hot water and you will get burned from it. So then you want to take your rock and put it back in the sink. And you just want to pour cold water in. And you want to do this for about, um, like, you know, a good, I don't know, minute. You want to because the rock holds heat and the rock, even though the water might be cold, the rock is still going to be super, um, super hot and way, way too hot for a hamster. So you want to just kind of keep pouring cold water on it. And as you can probably tell, I didn't use any soap or water on the rock. I didn't even clean the dirt off the rock. I simply just stuck it in a container of water and boiled it for one minute. And that's because the boiling is going to kill anything that would be in the dirt. And then the whole water thing rinses off the extra, so you don't need soap because it's going to kill the stuff when you boil it. So when you think your rock is cool, you can pull it out and just hold it for a minute. Make sure there's no heat coming out of the center of it. And then you want to dry it thoroughly. And I just use a washcloth and kind of squeeze it. Like that. And now we have a sterile rock. You see all those little holes in that? Those holes could contain mites, worms, creatures, eggs, crazy things that could hatch and live in your cage. You've got to kill everything that lives in this rock. Like, this rock is its own little habitat. And you got to kill every living thing in it before you put it in your hamster cage. Um, you could probably also buy sterile rocks from, like, the reptile department in the, um, in the uh, pet store. Um, but like I said, this is so, this is for two purposes, and I'm not going to use this rock because I already have a rock, um, but I'll show you where my rock is kept. So this is my water bottle, and my rock is kept right here, and it's kind of, um, and what it's for is for Forrest to stand on when she drinks from her water fountain so that she's shaving down her nails as she drinks. And it's also so that if this does drip when she's drinking, sometimes a drop or two will come out and land on the bedding. And you don't want wet bedding, so it kind of catches it and then the water will run down and by the time it gets down here, it's dry. So it prevents uh, wet bedding. So that's the reason for a rock. And I hope you have fun selecting your special rock and preparing it for your hamster. 
and keeping your hamster's nails down. And I will do another video about if how if this isn't working and your hamster's nails are overgrowing, um, how you can put your hamster's nails down. Okay, so have a great day and comment, rate, subscribe. Thank you. Bye-bye.